Hey friends, Wayne Lambright. This is a video about remanufacturing the pyramids to make electricity. So, I'm an amateur engineer. I don't have a I didn't finish my college cuz I had to pay for it myself and I come from a pretty uneducated family. So on <clears throat> so uneducated, I did not even know there were student loans. We're talking the year 1986. So, um, I just want to say I'm looking for a job in this area of physics and creativity. You know, Thomas Edison didn't go to college to be Thomas Edison. He had an intuition, and some people just have intuitions. And I've been like this my whole life, lots of intuitions. This is a follow-up video on the video I did last night about uh, the, the pyramids. Let me just read the title to you. But um, I'll just summarize what I said last night. The pyramids, it says, my theory on how the pyramids work and why my own discoveries. So the pyramids of Giza. So I want to tell you a few proven principles that are, so this is the true science that I'm applying to the pyramid. The piezoelectric rock piezoelectric effect. When you squish a, a, a piezo rock, granite, it makes electricity. If you vibrate it, it makes electricity. You can put a little piece in front of a stereo speaker and it just makes electricity because it's being vibrated. So that's been proven. We've They've also proven something called the Schumann resonance. It's in the ionosphere. And they've also proven that the Earth has its own frequency. The Earth resonates. It makes its own vibrations. It's very low and it's something like 6 hertz. And a uh, hertz is a cycle per second. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Or it's a thousand? No, that's kilohertz. So a hertz, 1 hertz would be 1 cycle per second. 2 hertz is 2 cycles per second. Okay, so the Earth has a resonance of 6, and the human body has a resonance of 6 cycles per second, so I'm told. So, I made a drawing here with the pyramid. So, if you've ever... Also, I want to make some assumptions that you know what the inside of the Great Pyramid looks like. There's some empty spots called the King's Chamber, the Queen's Chamber, the Sub-Chamber, and the Grand Gallery... And there's a new place they've discovered above the Grand Gallery that's like 90 feet long and 30 feet high. I don't know what name they've given it. But there's something about the, the, the roof of the King's Chamber, which is weird. And I want to talk about these things at the bottom of the King's Chamber called, called porticelluses. And so here we go. This bottom part is the king's chamber. And this, this these little things are the roof. Oh, I forgot to add a piece. Um, there's five. Yeah, I drew six. There's these, these, these are granite slabs. And one side's flat and the other side's kind of bumpy. This one doesn't exist. And these are, this is a granite slab here. Granite slab, granite slab. Walls are granite. Floor is granite. And this here is like... A little tube going over and then these are the porticelluses and they have like this is open you could crawl through here and they had the ability to lift these up and down and I think those are way that's basically microwave like radar it's a way to make microwave energy and it's called a wave tune it's wave tuning this is a big wave guide so waves come in here, and they do something. And I think what they do is, the Earth vibrates this, and this is called, this has a principle called harmonic resonance. So if you go, Woo, and you had like another tube, it would start going, Woo, it would pick up my noise and make a copy of it. It would make the, so if I, went like this, and I had a pipe, 
and you put like a measuring on it, it would start vibrating at the sound I was making. It would copy it completely. So what's important here is the piezoelectric effect of rock is when you, this is granite, all this red stuff is granite, and the other stuff here is not granite. Um, when you vibrate granite, it makes electricity. Um, what they did with the electricity, we don't really know, but there is evidence on one of the hieroglyphs of a big light bulb. Um, and you've seen that. Or just Google pyramid light bulb. You'll see it. And it looks like I had another amateur drawing. Okay. It looks like this. There's a man. This is the light bulb. This is a insulator. It's actually squared when you see the photo. And this looks like a snake. And it's basically a fluorescent light bulb. And fluorescent light bulbs work on the principle of plasma. There are five states of matter. Strong force, weak force, magnetic force, electromagnetic force, and plasma. So I think that the Egyptians were making electricity to power their light bulbs. I also, okay, now I'm going to say something very controversial. I don't think the people who made the pyramids were from Earth. There's something called remote viewing, and they think that aliens came here and made a, a worker bee race to do some stuff, but not heavy lifting. Like the box where the blocks were levitated, and they got some like slave humans to move them into place. <sighs> Maybe the aliens got stranded here. Don't really know. But there's allegedly, with Google Earth, they have found 3,000 pyramids. So maybe all these pyramids around the Earth were to make electricity for early electrical needs. Maybe they had more light bulbs than we're aware of. Um, during the gold rush, like, here's a big mountain. And let's say that's a house. I mean, like... Little things a house. So they dug a tunnel through here, and inside the tunnel, they found mortar pestles. A mortar is like a bowl, like this, and you got that thing, and you grind, you know, like your spices in it. They found those in the middle of the mountain, and they're those they would be like 200 million years old. So let's just make the assumption we don't know what happened on Earth a long time ago. Maybe it's like Planet of the Apes. Seriously, I know that sounds crazy. But here's my proposal. Since the um, King's Chamber is really just a lining of granite rock, I'm going to propose that we build a scaled-down pyramid, maybe half the size of the Egyptian pyramid, on a very stable foundation of like the hardest rock we can find around so that it will transfer the Earth's resonance frequency into it. Sand would isolate it maybe too much. So we could build this pyramid, we could um, build the pyramid with concrete. It doesn't have to be blocks. It just needs to be solid so it doesn't jiggle apart when it starts vibrating. And then the rooms would have the granite in them. And if we built... And the other thing is like, the top are these slabs? Makes no sense. You wouldn't, Why would you put like six pancakes above your house when you could just have the rafters? You wouldn't need like six sets of rafters above your house, would you? Of course not. And it's not because of the weight on top of it, because that's protected by these other things. So it's some type of resonating cavity, and human beings have been to the very top of that place in the king's chamber. So it's a it's something to do with a wave guide and sound and resonating frequencies. And so if you understand the piezo or piezoelectric effect on these special rocks, when you vibrate the rock, it makes electricity. So I'm proposing that we build this somewhere. 
maybe, you know, in a desert where if it doesn't work, it's not so ugly that people are like, why'd they build that? Let's tear it down. I don't know. Um, I'm not sure it would, I, I, it probably wouldn't cost a whole lot of money because we're using concrete. It would just be a very expensive concrete project. We probably wouldn't need like reinforcement and rebar in there because it's just rock. It's not a living structure. It's just meant to vibrate these cavities. So I'm going to propose that we build the same cavities inside as the Pyramid of Giza. Um, you know, somebody who's an expert in building radar platforms in microwave energy would know the answer to the resonant cavity size of those rooms. The bigger the room, the bigger the wave got the bigger the wavelength, the longer the wavelength. I know that. So maybe they have to be the same size. I don't know. But anyways, my proposal is, and please, in the comments, let's talk about this and let's figure this out. There's lots of billionaires around who are bored and got money. And maybe they want to throw some money at a project like this just for the f hell of it. Jeff Bezos has got a lot of money. And we just need, and also, tell me about billionaires you know who like science projects. Yeah. Hey, let's say I've discovered something. I've rediscovered something. If I've rediscovered that by building pyramid-shaped structures out of concrete with granite on the inside that mimics the same shape of the Giza pyramid and they make a ton of electricity because of the harmonic frequency of the earth at 6 hertz and that we can actually capture that electricity by putting a bunch of electrical wires on the bottom of the pyramid so we capture that electricity direct current and then funnel it off into the grid, I might have discovered a Earth power source. It would not be free energy because that pyramid's not free and it would cost money to build it and I'm talking about things that have already been proven, resonant frequency, oscillating couplers, uh, piezoelectric rock effect. I mean, haven't you always scratched your head like, what the fuck? Have they, why did they build the pyramids? And when you start looking, I talked to a guy tonight and he didn't know that the king's chamber or the queen's chamber, he said, he said they found that? People have been in there? And I was like... Yeah, they really have. I said, once you see it, it'll blow your mind. He never heard about ancient aliens. and um, He's actually an electrical contractor. But, you know, you just sometimes people just don't investigate things. They found a pyramid in uh, China that had a lot of mercury in it. Don't know why. They said it was the tomb of a, of a, a former king or a king or... Emperor, whatever they call them. But um, maybe it was an alien who lived here and taught them magical technology. Um, I'm very loose with my thinking, obviously. So, in conclusion, help me find a billionaire who wants to consider building something like this. If we're right, we might have discovered a way to make something vibrate from the frequency of the earth which is non-stop so that is that's a free frequency we can tap into we're using coupled oscillator technology on top of the piezoelectric effect my name's Wayne Lambright and this is my invention I get to blade my name on it at least and uh, I'm a totally poor guy this is my motor home and I need a job but I don't have a college degree in physics, but I'm fascinated by it. And I could, I went to college and, you know, given enough time, I can pass those tests and finish my degree. I just don't have the money. I'm super poor. I'm on food stamps. Life is, I'm grateful for my life. I'm grateful I've got a computer and the internet and my, and I'm still alive. I'm going to be 50 years old this year and I'm happy to share my ideas with the world. 
And um, I think collectively we use the consciousness of all human beings who are interested in these topics via the internet and places like YouTube to use the group think to, to fine tune this idea. We're like sharpening a stick or we're polishing something. That's what we're doing. We're polishing a stone and we're going to make it really shiny. And the more we polish it, the more finished it will become. I'm just one person and you just, I would say, don't have any fear in sharing your idea as silly as you might think it could be. It might unlock somebody else to think something. For example, I posted this in uh, a category of 4chan called X and it was just there for 24 hours. They actually deleted it. But somebody said that maybe the air shaft from the King's Chamber, not only was it pointing at the star cluster of Orion, which has been known, but maybe it was a type of radio transmission uh, antenna. And I never thought of that. So I like that idea, that maybe it was sending a special radio wave signal to them, and maybe they had a way, maybe it was just a big speaker and they used the pyramid as a radio broadcasting station. The pyramid guys, oh, this is kind of, well, this whole video is on it, is a tangent, isn't it? But um, they held these, they held something that was always a circle, and it had this thing, and then a human would be here holding it. So what the hell is this circle thing with this side? It's always elaborately decorated, but it's in a lot of the hieroglyphs. If we were to make hieroglyphs today, it would be people holding their iPhone or their rifle or their tennis racket or next to their Ferrari. Something like that, right? All right. Oh, it's midnight. It's the 23rd of August, 2018. I love doing videos like this because I love science, man. I believe that technology, God is science. And um, so maybe that's why we're here. Is we're, we're, some, we're some cruel joke. He like puts all the information here and he's like, him, God and another God have a bet. He's like, I'll, I bet it takes them 10 million years to figure it out. And the other guy's like, no. Nope. They'll figure it out in one million years because my DNA version of human this time is better than the old version of human DNA. And they run a bet like the movie Trading Places. Maybe it's a dollar bet also. <laughs> it's a bar of gold. I just don't know. Thanks for hearing me out. Let's build the Wayne Lambright Pyramid, Station, uh, Pyramid Coupled Oscillator Power Station full of piezoelectric rock. Help me find a billionaire who maybe wants to fund this. I don't think it's going to cost a billion. I think we could probably build something for $30 million. Concrete is pretty cheap. And uh, we just buy a bunch of land where we could make the concrete on location. So we need the aggregate on property. And then we need just some water. It's not hard to do. Let's do it. Peace.